At the Whitby Castle in Rye on June 5th, the 12th Annual Above the Bar Awards honored Westchester attorneys who were selected by their peers and distinguished judges. Presented by Citrin Cooperman Accountants and Advisors, Pace University's Elizabeth Howe Law School, and the Westchester County Business Journal, sponsors included the Kensington Assisted Living in White Plains, Val's Putnam Wine and Liquors, and Country Bank. Supporters were My Elder, Westchester County Bar Association, Buzz Creators, the Bristol Assisted Living, the Westchester Women's Bar Association, and Shark Creative. The keynote speaker for the evening was Judge Kathy Davidson, Administrative Judge of the New York State 9th Judicial District. Gary Carlitz of Citroen Cooperman was the Master of Ceremonies. Judge Davidson earned her Bachelor of Arts degree in Simmons College in Boston and her Juris Doctorate at Howard University School of Law in Washington, D.C. So without further ado, let me introduce you to our, tonight's keynote speaker and our Administrative Judge, Judge Kathy Davidson. Tonight we have five individuals who have heard the call and have gone the extra mile and as such are being honored tonight. The title of the awards in and of itself, Above the Bora, sets what you've done today. There are always limits. There are limits that we set by ourselves, those are those that are set by others, and then there seems to be a higher calling. And that's what we hear to here today, the higher calling of those lawyers in their chosen profession. Historically, lawyers have been viewed to fix a bad situation with money, punishment, or retribution. But as said tonight, this law is ever increasing and changing. But tonight I will speak to you about something a little more for the legal profession that's been exhibited in our five lawyers this evening. And that's the, legal, the profession of social engineering. Social engineering has a long history. One of our major social engineers and major proponents was Dr. Charles Houston, a prominent lawyer and the Vice Dean of Howard University of Law, an historically black university, my university. He famously had the NAACP's legal fight against separate but equal, which led to the Supreme Court's decision in Brown v. Board of Education, a case I know all of you are familiar with, which allows me to stand here today before you and also allows me to be the first woman in African American women in this position. I salute my dean. Houston believed that education to be an instru instrument for effecting meaningful change in our society, which could at times appear to be impossible and insurmountable. Houston inspired the faculty and the students with a sense of urgency and a sense of boldness. It was the duty of African American lawyers to be advocates of racial injustice. Houston expounded a philosophy of social engineering, which was grounded in the belief that the law could be used effectively to secure fundamental social change. Tonight, we honor five individuals whose lives reflect a desire to use their law degrees to ensure that the practice elevates to the law to a new standard, a new meaning, a new world for the lawyers. Dick Gardella is the absolute personification of the requirements for the Pace Setter Award. Dick has already been recognized as a true Hall of Famer by many organizations, including this one tonight, and the Westchester County Bar Association, of which we, he was our president from 1997 to 1999 and president of our foundation in 2007 and 2008. You know, Pace Setter Award, I had to think hard about that. There's a little bit of irony involved because I'm probably older than anybody here. I'm 83 and a man of that age doesn't have the fastest pace. But, but I, uh, I console myself with my belief that fast pace is not always the right pace. And I goes to my basic issue, that as lawyers, we're scholars for life. And we have an obligation as lawyers to continue our education because our education, especially involved with history, is a cornerstone of our society. I'm honored to present this year's 2018 award for most socially conscious attorney to Natalie Subcheck. I am so deeply honored um, and humbled by this award. Um, 
you know, I, I love being a lawyer. This, this was a, a lifelong dream, and I was so lucky to get the position of the Director of Pro Bono Programs with the Pace Women's Justice Center. Um, all my career I've worked with vulnerable um, populations and underserved populations. This is truly special work. Um, it's hard work, it's really good work, and it's very, very important work that we do at the Pace Women's Justice Center. As a former Above the Bar Award recipient, it is an honor and a privilege to introduce the recipient of this year's award for Outstanding Civil Rights Attorney. And of course, as mentioned by Gary, it's a particular pleasure tonight because the recipient of this award is my law partner and my dear friend, Kim Berg. Although I think we can all agree that inroads have been made over decades in recognizing, protecting, and enforcing basic civil rights, I can honestly say that there is still much work to be done. I personally witness in my employment law practice the existence of continued discriminatory barriers to equal treatment, including in opportunities, pay, advancement, and it stems across all workplaces and industries, including in the legal profession. For 13 years, I've been a partner and colleague of Julie Curley. And before you say, hold on a second, this is the under 40 award. How does someone who's been that for 13 years qualify? It's because this woman's an overachiever. I met her as an attorney at, she was age 24, 24 years old. I consider her my sister and I present to you Julie Curley. <laughs> I'd like to dedicate this award to my father. Uh, when I started out as an attorney, my father was grumbling to me about some stupid attorney who was doing work for him. Uh, after a little prodding, I came to find out that the attorney really wasn't a stupid attorney. He just wasn't holding um, my father's hands and walking him through the transaction that they were working at at the time. And uh, he, my father made me promise that when I was practicing law that I would never treat his clients I would never treat my clients the way his attorney was treating him. And um, that kind of stuck with me as I practiced. Uh, I like to think that I try my best to treat my clients the way I would want another attorney to treat my father. And that's guided how I've, I've maintained my attorney-client relationship over the years. So, uh, so thank you, Dad, for helping me make me a better attorney. As someone that's uh, deeply committed to the protection of the environment and other natural resources, uh, Sarah Sinquamani, uh, is uh, a model of a Pace Law student. Um, she came to study at our um, nationally recognized environmental law program um, and excelled in her studies, but even more importantly from my perspective, um, excelled as a citizen of the law school. I came to law school knowing that I wanted to do environmental law. I would only go to law school there was an environmental law program, and PACE was the place for me. Um, I've truly enjoyed my three years there, getting involved, Student Bar Association president this year. Um, as Dean Anderson said, I would look for problems to solve because I thought that that kind of was the best way to tackle student issues on campus. And I can say 100% here today, I am an extremely proud PACE student, and now I'm an extremely proud PACE alum. Thank you everyone this evening.